Billy Ray Foley. That's not little. Jim Jackson. And Kenner. Billy Ray's getting ready to get the commander's car. He walks out and the thing was over. And I said, who are you? He said, I don't know where the car is. Jim said it was here somewhere within two blocks and I gotta find it. Well, he gave that car, when his turn was up, he gave that car to Les. It didn't have but 490,000 miles on it and four ball tires. <laughs> well, to make a long story, we, hello, <laughs> we, we came to, to this hotel and we had a conference the next morning in Monroe. Well, Les and Jackie, Jackie told Les how to get to here. And then Rudy and I came up and we traveled on up. And Les says, I don't know where to go. Okay, just follow us, Les. Well, kept looking in the rearview mirror. Here's Les. He does 40, he does 50, he does 60, and he does 40 again. And all of a sudden, I look back, there's no Les. I said, Rudy, we got to go back and find Les. Where is he? Well, call him. He ain't going to answer the telephone. So we turn around back, and here's Les. He's walking out, looking at his car. He's on the side of the road. We get out. He says, I got a flat. We said, we can see that. Why didn't you start fixing it? He says, I don't know how. <laughs> Jackie says, I tried to tell him he won't listen to me. <laughs> Where's the Jack? And then here's the thing about it is, is Juliana and Billy Ray was following them up. <clears throat> and they got there just about the time that Rudy and I got the flat fixed. Which was very convenient. So, whenever they said, what kind of present can we get less tonight? We looked all over for a jack, but we couldn't find it. <laughs> and then I got one other thing to say about Les, and we went through the year, and it was great. We all worked together and everything. But, Les, will you, still, will you stand up a minute? I don't think I <laughs> Les, your pants are unzipped. <laughs> We was on the we was on the tour at the, at the VA hospital in the, in the World War II Museum in, in New Orleans, and Les didn't meet that. We walked around, and this little lady, this nice little lady, walked along, and we was walking, and he said, Rodney, and he stepped back, he said, you know, your pants are unzipped. Well, I knew they wouldn't, but how do you, you go, you got to look and see. So anyway, <laughs> so we're proud to have you, and, and great for all of you, and thank you very much, Les, for a great year. Rudy? Rudy. As in Rudy Berg. How many Rudy's, please all Rudy's stand up. Rudy, you're the only one standing up. Come on down. Wait, did you know you were supposed to do something? You're telling me now, right? Well then, who's that? You gotta move the podium. <laughs> Thank you, my friend. Uh, Commander? Yes, sir. I'm glad you got that right. <laughs> Good evening. Uh, you know that Rodney said most everything that needed to be said for two cohorts in crime, co vice co co department commanders. But one thing he forgot. It was not Les that told him to look down. It was that little nurse and that little girl that was working with us. <laughs> Commander, we can tell you two or three things that you've done outstanding, and we'll leave it like that. <laughs> you know, Les served in the Air Force for eight years during the time of conflict of the Korean War. We asked him a couple of times if it was, you know, kind of scary if it was dangerous. And he said, well, not really, because all the Koreans, North Koreans, kept passing me by. I said, well, didn't you shoot him in the rear? He said, well, no. I ran out of coke. <laughs> <laughs> then when he got out to service, to say no more, he did not have enough of flying. But he wanted to fly something a little bit faster the coke can. So he got employed by NASA. After a couple years working with NASA, 
He asked one of the astronauts, he said, how do you get into this program? He said, well, aren't you an employee of NASA? Well, yeah, but how do you get into this program? <laughs> now, Les actually worked a very integral part of the NASA program for, our, for the success of our space program. And he served 26 years there. And you know, we stop and think about that, and we, then we turn around and ask a man, were you glutton for punishment joining the American Legion? <laughs> and he said, oh no, it's similar to the military. You sign your name to a piece of paper, and every so often they ask you for donations. <laughs> and then one day he did not have change in his pocket, so they asked him to run for office. And he was unselfishly about himself, and he said, yeah, I think I will. And I believe that tonight, we're honored, and we need to pay tribute to this man, not just at the testimonial, because for the past year as his vice commander, one of his vice commanders, I have never seen a man who was not more dedicated to the American Legion, bar none, than our commander, Les Crowell. And I believe he deserves a big round of applause. about Madam President, okay? Because I'd be remiss if I wouldn't talk about my girlfriend. <laughs> no offense taken, right, Gerald? <laughs> uh, Rodney said it all when he asked about her coin, right? And she got 10 bucks from Rodney. Well, I'm gonna tell you, <clears throat> that lady already has a master's degree in economics. Because one of our members had turned around and asked her for a second, co uh, a second pin and she turned around and said, I already gave you one. You got $5? <laughs> and he said, yes, I sure do. So well, give it to me. And she gave him a broken pin. <laughs> Is he entitled to a refund? <laughs> oh, well, we didn't think so. So what we did is we took his $5 that he gave her and he pulled it back from her. He said, I'm going to give it to you later. And he wound up putting the broken pin, by the way, in a frame with her five dollars. And then the comment was, if you can recycle this, please do so. <laughs> now, the President, it's been an honor to work with you and the Commander and all the other Legionnaires during the past year. Commander, I salute you and I thank you for your time. Going up in space, I couldn't help but think that all the equipment I was riding on was supplied by the lowest bidder. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I, if, and, and this is going to be the last roast for our department command, and it's going to uh, entail a whole bunch of you out here on in, in the audience. Everybody with a rubber band, please come forward. And and I have to I have to tell you the story behind this. And and wait later, wait, 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 no, no, wait, 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 wait. We no 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 I'm going I'm gonna get him to stand up. Here, here's the story behind this. We at their post, and 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 we have we their their post holds a bingo, and there are several organizations that hold a bingo at their post, and there's a lot of ladies that are uh, uh, that help with the bingo, and Les has a habit of taking a rubber band and he flips them at the ladies, so the ladies say, hey. We want to get back at him. So here it is, ladies. Go for it. <laughs> and I know that has and that, that doesn't have a lot of meaning to a lot of people here, but I guarantee you, yes, it has a lot of meaning. And to all the all the people that from the post and from
from the organization that hold the people there, that Les is always messing with, is there one little time that they can get back. Uh, Mr. Commander, I want to tell you, it's been my privilege knowing you, and I, I could not have imagined that I, have, I could have served uh, a, a better commander, uh, and I've served a lot of commanders, but you have not been the least. You have not been the most, but you have been up there. <laughs> so Thank you. 